Hey guys, it's Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about tech and the gear that I use to make video along with other techniques and other tricks I've learned to make the creative process faster. If we consider the announcement that we have from Nikon with the Z6 and the Z7 and what we can learn from it, on one hand, we have Nikon taking an approach to addressing a lot of the growing pains that were facing Sony in regards to backwards compatibility, uh, lens, lenses, uh, f f like ergonomic form factorness. But on the other hand, we see a camera that is not truly oriented at replacing the Nikon conventional DSLRs that we have from them right now. We have a camera that is really geared towards like video shooters, ironically enough. And, and it's just, it's, it's kind of confusing, but I'm gonna do my best to unpack it and just give you guys some opinions and, and what I have. So first, let's just dive into the big elephant in the room, which is the lens mount. So the lens mount is a brand new lens mount, but Nikon has engineered this lens mount to be backwards compatible with all of their AFS Nikkor glass, which is something that they're making a really big deal about because uh, a big criticism and even a criticism that I have of Sony is that the current Sony lens lineup isn't that full featured. It's not that comprehensive yet. And companies like Sigma and Tamron are taking advantage of this to fill it in, to fill in the gaps kind of uh, of what Sony has on the landscape currently. Um, Nikon, Nikon to circumvent this went ahead and gave us their F to Z adapter. They're, they're gonna be selling at a discount when you buy it with the camera. Uh, the next thing is battery life. Now, there's really weird conflicting battery stuff um, that it's gonna get 330 batteries per single charge, but you can get more batteries if you do certain tricks or wizardry that have the screens off. But at the end of the day, we see Nikon utilizing the ENEL15 battery form factor um, that they've had for four or five years now for a new mirrorless camera. So on one hand, Nikon introduces a new mount, but they give us an adapter to have backwards compatibility with their batteries, yet they're keeping the old batteries that have a lower capacity that were geared towards SLR users that don't need as much power. And then as a fix for poor battery life, they're offering an optional grip that takes two ENEL15 batteries. Like, really Nikon? I, what? Like, I would have hoped that Nikon had learned from Sony and just given us a, a battery with bigger capacity right from the rip, right? And then for legacy Nikon users, maybe give us a vertical grip that you can use ENEL15 batteries with or, or something like that. But to, to use, to introduce a new lens mount, but not to introduce a new battery is just, it's just kind of puzzling. Um, also, we have a camera that's, that looks like it's going to be incredibly capable for video. But with the battery life of the bodies, we're looking at a 15 minute approximate record time. Like, like that means that for each of these YouTube videos that's like eight to 10 minutes long, I would be lucky to film two of them uh, with a single battery. Meanwhile, my A6500 gets close to 45 minutes to an hour recording time off of a single battery. But, hey. Okay, so the next thing I, I, I need to talk about is the buffer. So the buffer on these cameras, Fronos Photo did a video and shooting raw plus fine JPEG with the 45 megapixel Z7, we have a 12 image buffer. 
Now keep in mind, <laughs> this 12 image buffer clears extremely fast because of the read and write speeds on XQD cards being so bloody fast. So for like real world, like concert photographers, I, I don't know if it's going to be that big of an issue, but 12 images, I mean, keep in mind that if it was just raw, maybe he's netting 15 to 16 images on the buffer. With the Z6, if the Z6 uses the same size buffer and has approximately half the megapixels, we're looking at 20 to 25 images in the buffer for the Z6, which isn't bad, but it's not great. I mean, it's clearly a cost cutting measure from Nikon to go ahead and skimp on the internal buffer. Okay, the next point that I want to talk about is the single card slot. A lot of people are saying this camera is not a camera for pros. This camera is clearly for amateurs, but it's not priced like an amateur camera. Not all pros use dual redundancy for card backup. Sure, a ton of them use it when it's available, but a lot of high-end video cameras have one piece of media that stuff is being recorded to, and a lot of times it's not even recording like dual redundancy to stuff. I, I know with a lot of the RED cinema cameras and a lot of the other video cameras, more often than not, you are writing to one card because writing to dual cards simultaneously slows down the writing process. So. I'm not excusing Nikon for not including two memory card slots, but I think people are making a bigger deal out of it than, than this is. I mean, most people on YouTube watching reviews are not making money with their cameras, or not making serious money with their cameras. And if you're not doing a one-time event or event coverage, there isn't a high likelihood that you're going to be behooved to, to shoot with dual card redundancy. I might be wrong, but if I am wrong, let me know in the comments down below. The next thing that I want to go ahead and touch on regarding this Nikon is the durability and the weather sealing. And it seems like Nikon, and I said this in a previous video, is still copying Sony. Uh, by giving us one camera body, two camera models, and it's clear that Nikon is trying to cut costs with this camera. It's clear that they wanted to make a, a ultra durable camera body. So what this would lead me to believe, or the, the impression that it's giving me, is that by Nikon investing a lot of money into a magnesium alloy body and the weather sealing, that they're probably going to be reusing this chassis in late and by chassis I mean uh, I mean the, the 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 machining of it and the tooling of it. Um, Nikon's going to be reusing this tooling in later cameras down the line. Um, and if they don't do it, that's kind of silly because they have invested a lot in making this camera weather sealed and they've done a lot to promote that it's weather sealed. Um, which is interesting because again, we're given a mediocre sized battery and one card slot, but Nikon just thinks it's important to spend lots of money on, on ultra durable construction. That's definitely not the approach Sony takes. It's probably not the approach I would have taken because if I'm going to, as a company, invest that much money into a machining a really durable, really high quality camera metal chassis, then I'll, I would probably put more high-end professional features into it. Um, so again, a little bit confusing, but that, that's just the specs that, that I care about, right? Um, and I'm gonna touch on the video stuff in a second. So real quick, I wanna interrupt this to talk about Backblaze. If you shoot video or photos and you only have it backed up on one hard drive, then don't make the mistake that I did and lose four terabytes because you don't have it backed up somewhere. For all those wondering, Backblaze is a cloud service that for 50 bucks a year will allow you to back up all of your physical hard drives. So it's kind of like cloud raid to best explain it. 
I'll have a link in the description below. You can use the affiliate link. If you don't want to use it, don't use it, but back up your stuff in more than one place. Okay, now back to talking about the future of Nikon. Now, it seems like Nikon, with this announcement, has prioritized a few things. One, it's the best video currently available. 10-bit, uh, 422, uncompressed, uh, 4K video, in log, via HDMI out to an external recorder, game changer. At least for serious video people, um, there's gonna be no reason why you couldn't rig up one of these Nikon bodies with an external recorder, with an external power source, and power it via the USB-C jack, which if you're doing a long video shoot, you're probably using a more professional setup. Water pause. Uh, so Nikon has given us a lot of this video-centric features and it almost seems like Nikon is positioning these cameras to look at the market and go, okay, we can't give you the best mirrorless full-frame camera with the technology that we have and the R&D that we have right now. But we do have phenomenal DSLRs. So if you're a current D850 owner or you're a current D500 owner, and you want to shoot more video. Maybe you do YouTube. Maybe you do, uh, maybe video is something that your clients are starting to ask. Or maybe you own a wedding cinematography company or a wedding photography company and you have people saying, hey, we would, can you shoot video yet? Do you want to shoot video for us yet? Um, as a Nikon shooter, you now can go, well, I can just go get this $2,000 video camera and then a $600 external recorder and I can literally rig up a phenomenal full frame 4K video camera with what seems to be very, very decent video autofocus, at least on par with what we had from the A7R2 for video autofocus. And, and so it doesn't seem like Nikon is trying to replace the D850 or the D500 or the D5 in your camera bag. Burp. Uh. Uh, but Nikon is trying to like upsell you that like, hey, you want to go ahead and shoot video. So we don't have a phenomenal video DSLR that shoots log profile or 10 bit, but we have a great mirrorless camera that will sell you for 2200 bucks with the, uh, ex uh, I did <laughs> but we have an, uh, but we have a great video camera that will sell you for 2200 bucks with an included adapter so all of your current Nikon glass can go on there. And so it's like, what I'm really curious about is how long are we going to have to take these like half-hearted approach, right? To, to DSLRs from Nikon. And the thing that I'd be really, really curious about, and I've been shouting about this for a while, if Nikon brought the D850 that they have right now, if they reintroduced it with on-chip, phase detect, full-time video autofocus, how many people would want to buy the Z7? Because from my point of view, Nikon's been doing the R&D. Alarm. From my point of view, Nikon's been doing the R&D on these cameras for a while. And if they could have given us better video autofocus in the D850, would that hurt the sales of their current mirrorless cameras? That's just a thought. At least to my point, at least to my way of thinking, if Nikon is developing this on-chip phase detect and contrast detect autofocus and they're putting it on mirrorless cameras, but but will they introduce this technology on their DSLRs? Because then because then, if we have a D850 that has phenomenal video autofocus and 10-bit 422 out via HDMI and maybe even 8-bit uh, 4K 60 frames a second internal, right, with a D850, if, if we have something like that, then what's, what's Canon's answer going to be? 
Is Canon gonna release a mirrorless camera that goes toe to toe? Or is that gonna force camera, is that gonna force Canon into a, the position to introduce a 5D Mark V with the phenomenal video autofocus or be, improved video autofocus and then uncropped 4K? I just think that, the, that, that what Nikon has done is, is kind of show their hand for what they can do for tech wise. And then what that tells us about the future of Nikon mirrorless cameras, and in my opinion, is less interesting than what the tech that they have for their mirrorless cameras means for their DSLRs. Because if Nikon's gonna continue to give us these half-hearted attempts with poor capacity batteries and single card slots on their mirrorless cameras, but they're gonna show that they have phenomenal technology available in these mirrorless cameras, then what can that tell us for the future of the DSLR? At least to me, right now, I would love to see Nikon release a D500 successor with phenomenal video autofocus that competes with the A6500 and, and things along those lines. But these are questions and these are things that no one's bringing up, no one's talking about, and I, I, I I just, I wanted to, I wanted to, to have a conversation with you guys because more important than not, I want to know what you think about the future of Nikon and the future of Nikon product offerings. Sorry for the rant, the ranting video and the, the uncutness of it, but till next time, it's been Mitchell coming to you from Hanoi. I'm out.